we'll start our session by writing the data given in this example data given so just a minute yes <coughs> so here it is whatever the data given to us so first of all we'll write the data given to us when a 440 by 110 volt single phase transformer so this transformers voltage ratio is 440 by 110 so we can write that primary voltage is equal to 440 volt and secondary voltage v2 is equal to 110 volt it is a single phase transformer operated on no load condition so this is also important uh, uh, information it operates at no load condition right it draws 6 ampere from the supply means that means the no load current which is known as I0 is equal to 6 ampere <coughs> the power factor of 0 0.25 lagging so this current is drawn 50 at 0 0.25 lagging power factor there are 110 turns in primary winding so n1 primary winding number of turns is equal to 110 so now find so now we need to go for data to find data to find what data exactly we need to find in this transformer first we need to find the iron loss right the first of all we need to find the iron loss iron loss then magnetizing current we denote magnetizing current by i mu and maximum value of flux density in the core right so uh, we need to find maximum value of flux density in the core so flux density is bm so this three thing we need to find so how we will proceed that is the most important thing so first of all let's observe that what we need to find the iron loss but next we need to find the magnetizing current and the flux density so to understand what exactly we need to find and how we can proceed to solve this example for that we need to draw the diagram the vector diagram of transformer it is always important that you should have clear idea of what you need to find so this is the flux right uh, on vertical axis we will draw the uh, E1 right why it is like this that we have already studied in our previous session so right now i'm not going in deep that why it is 90 degree and all that thing here we'll consider that the this is the flux 5 it is the e1 now <coughs> the no load current is basically this we call it i0 and this i0 has two components the first component is horizontal component is this and is known as i mu which is known as magnetizing component and the another component is this which is known as i w the i w current is basically responsible for the iron loss or minor amount of copper loss in primary winding i mu is completely responsible to magnetize the core so now we have a clear idea that what exactly we need to find we need to find first the iron loss and what is ultimately a power loss is a power loss is ultimately v i right or i square r or v i cos 5 right so in this case this power loss will be multiplied by voltage this current and this power factor so how we can get the iron loss so we'll write solution so how we can get the solution so the 
iron loss in this machine or in this transformer we can write it as or denote it by wi iron loss is v into i w so vi will be the iron loss in this machine now do we know this i w we don't know this i w right but to get this i w we need to use this i o current why we need to use this because here there will be v1 voltage and the angle between these two is known as the cos 5 right now what we will do we will take this thing that angle between these two is given to us as cos 5 which is 0 0.25 so how we can get iw iw will be i0 into cos 5 right iw will be i0 into cos 5 what is i0 the value of i0 is 6 ampere we have that what is cos 5 it is 0 0.25 we have that so if we place these values uh, 6 ampere multiply by 0 0.25 then by calculating it 6 multiplied by 0 0.25 gives us 1.5 right so the IW is 1.5 ampere so now from this we can get the ion losses the terminal voltage V1 on supply side is 440 volt so let's place these values Oh, sorry we'll take the black pen so v1 is 440 multiplied by 1.5 so 1.5 multiplied by 440 gives us 660 right so the wi is equal to 660 watt wi will be 660 watt right if anybody has any doubt you can ask me anytime right so now let's move ahead we have got the iron losses which is uh, 660 watt now we need to find i mu and what is i mu i mu is the horizontal component of i0 so if you uh, let me rub it if you draw this dotted line over here which is same in length as of i mu then using this diagram you can write that i mu is equal to i0 into sine phi so i mu is basically i0 into sin 5 now from where this thing comes if you don't know then in short i am uh, describing this thing that this is our i0 this one is i w and this one is i mu this angle is given to us and that is cos phi right that is not cos phi i'm sorry that is phi right now <coughs> if you want to write the cosine angle then cos phi is equal to uh, the nearby side and the adjacent uh, so i w by i zero so from this you can write i w is equal to i zero into cos 5 and if you want to write for sin 5 sin 5 is equal to i m divided by i 0 sorry i mu divided by i 0 so you can write i mu from here 
i0 into sin 5 so this is a simple trigonometry mathematics so from this equation or from this logic of sin 5 angle we can get i mu is equal to i0 into sin 5 now the next task we need to find is i mu which is i0 into sin 5 do we know the value of sin 5 no we don't know what is sin 5 but how we can get the sin 5 so the cos 5 angle is given to us cos 5 is 0 0.25 so phi is equal to cos inverse of 25 so we can write that uh, is it possible to have sorry it's not I'll do it in my mobile right just a minute I'll do it in my mobile and I'll let you know let me calculate this uh, sine 5 and then this 5 will place so that we can get the sine 5 let me calculate this thing cos uh, uh, inverse and we can get sin 5 is equal to 0 0.986 0 0.986 so now we have the value of sin 5 i0 i0 is equal to 6 ampere so i0 is 6 ampere sin 5 is 0 0.986 so we can get i mu 6 into 0 0.986 9.86 gives us 5.916 so we'll take it as 5.92 so 5.92 ampere of magnetizing current will flow now we need to find the flux density right maximum flux density what is the equation of a flux density the equation for flux density b is equal to phi by a for maximum flux density is phi m by a but observe the data given here we do not have a the cross-sectional area so when we do not have this cross-sectional area what we can do we can assume that a is unity a is equal to 1 and once we assume that our cross-sectional area is unity we can go for bm is equal to phi m why because we are assuming that our cross-sectional area is unity and why we are assuming our cross-section area is unity because it is not given in this numerical and there is no other way by which we can find the cross-sectional area so by default we'll consider this thing as a you uh, unit cross-sectional area and then we'll go for finding bm is equal to phi m because a is equal to 1 so now we have the equation induced emf in transformers primary e is equal to 4.44 phi m f into n1 so this phi m f into n1 this is primary number of turn this is the frequency right do we have the frequency no we do not have the frequency and when we do not have the frequency uh, we are in India and our frequency is always constant right so we can uh, calculate it as phi m is equal to e1 divided by 4.44 f n 1 okay let's move ahead uh, uh, e1 that is the our primary voltage that is 440 volt so it's 440 volt now 
4.44 f is the frequency 50 hertz and n1 is primary number of turn it is uh, 110 it's given over here primary number of turn it's 110 so now this is 110 so phi m is equal to 440 divided by 4.44 divided by 50 divided by 110 so it gives us 0 0.01801801801801801 wow what a fantastic number right it's good number right 0 0.0180 is the answer 0 0.0180 weber so this is our maximum flux and the flux density bm will be 0 0.0180 Weber per meter square so this is our answer do not stop here because in example it is asked to calculate flux density right 